Hello, and welcome out to another Insights. And i uh, going to start off like we usually do. I found this quote either yesterday or today, and I liked it. It just hit me. Um, and it's pretty obvious, right? Success doesn't come to you. You go to it. I know that is uh, <laughs> It's not hard for most of us to understand, I would hope. But um, the hard part, and here's the challenge, and this is where I'm going to relate it to trading, is that this quote, if you misconstrue it, the way you look at it, you go, okay, we're going to go get success. And a lot of times people will go into the market thinking that we're going to go get it. In other words, I'm going to I'm going to force it to happen. And we can't force the market to do anything no matter what we want. So in other words, it's it's this is kind of hard to explain. It's It's a matter of tweaking it to thinking and not thinking that we're going to make it we're going to force our will upon it is that we have to control ourselves only. In other words, we can't do anything about what the market does. We can only react to what it does. So while we can't grab it, hold of it, and go get it, we can manage and maintain what we have internally so that it can come to us. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's it's... A lot of times I don't have a challenge explaining some things, but this one seems a little more difficult, but um, I'm hoping that that made sense. So we have to be cautious of how we, we take this term and apply it, because it, be, it can be applied incorrectly, if that makes sense. So let us uh, move on now to the economic data. So as you may have noticed, the uh, dedicated trader has uh, changed making lots and lots of changes to it so uh which is good always we're kind of getting things better and better all the time so economic events for this next week coming up uh look at 27th which is what i think wednesday is that right yeah it's wednesday it's the first one showing uh interesting it's pretty rare to, to go a couple days without data but uh, at least that i recall usually there's some every day but uh let's see new home sales Looks like a lot of it's just housing sector. So if you're in the housing sector, then that obviously could have an effect. Uh, durable goods, pending home sales, 28th, KC um, employment benefits, Q over Q, GDP. That could be big. Um, consensus prior, consensus 1.3 prior was 2. It's all about the consensus, really. If it comes in and it's better than was expected, then typically the market will react positively to that. If it was worse than expected, then that's different. So I don't know how much GDP is really going to affect things. A lot of this stuff I don't think has much of an effect anyway. So yeah, we're getting into the first, which so there's not much there uh, next week as far as economic data goes. So we are in the heart of earnings season, though, so we've got to be aware of that and uh, keep tabs on what's coming up. So let me – how do I have this all set? Um, just go through and look at the overall market. Um, S&P, obviously, big day today. Um, well, okay. big update as far as points go. Uh, you see the uh, volume got lighter, too. So we've got kind of a capitulation move there on Wednesday. Uh, the hammer type of pattern. Uh, big volume. I don't know if I'd call it capitulation yet. It's really not. Usually capitulation happens at the end of a downtrend, a long-term downtrend. Um, but you could call this, you know, a big move to the downside and a short-term capitulation, if you will. But no surprise to see this up. Uh, big volume selling off, but then a lot of that volume came back in and uh, rallied it back higher. The fact that the volume is getting lighter as it rallies is a bearish sign. So we will keep an eye on things and see how they play out. I'm uh, looking for, see if there's any minor, yeah, see there's, I thought I saw something there. It's pretty minor. Uh, in fact, I'm going to even make it a small, minor support level there. Let's see if there's anything else up here that we can look at. That's about the next level. Um, again, some minor support resistance areas to watch for where we may get a reversal. Um, I would say I'm pretty confident in this move to the downside that we have just started the longer term downtrend that we're probably going to be in. And when I say long term, it could be six months. It could be two years. Uh, it depends on how far and fast it, it goes. 
Um, it may not do anything. I mean, there, it's always possible. I thought back here in last August was the beginning of the crash, or at least a downtrend. And boom, it bounced, it bounced, and then it rallied back up. So we could very well have this type of thing again. Uh, would not be a huge surprise if it rallied back up. The surprise would be is if it gets above 2,000. I don't think it's going to do that, at least now. Um, I mean, there's always a possibility that this thing just dances and, and goes sideways. You know, it channels between 2,000 and 1,850 for the next little while. It could bounce. I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen. We don't know. But uh, just trying to, to create a vision and a longer-term plan. My, my bet is that we're having a longer-term downtrend, if not... Uh, the beginnings of a crash. So I think I've been saying that over and over and over again, so I don't need to, to beat that drum too much. But I'm uh, not the one I wanted. There we go. And here's the thing. We got so oversold and so far away from the averages and so far away from everything that the, the pullback is no surprise. Uh, in fact, I would say next week, uh, I would look for this thing. If it rallies quickly up to, we've got the 20-day moving average, the purple line there, and that, you know, minor resistance level coming in at 1955. So if Monday or Tuesday it goes up and hits, it'll probably, that 20 day will probably be at 1955, Monday or Tuesday, maybe Wednesday at the latest. So we could run up and hit that and use it as a resistance level, especially if those two areas coincide. Granted, the 1955 is not that solid. Uh, but if they hit together, then it could act as a stronger resistance level. So uh, if it doesn't, if it dances around here and just goes sideways for a few days, then hard to say, hard to say. I would I would expect that if it dance around for a little bit, that we might get one pop up, hit the 20 day, and then turn over from there. That's kind of what I'm expecting. But um, expectations have to be ready to be changed at any moment. So the other markets pretty much looking the same. Nasdaq, Dow, uh, transports very similar, except not as bullish. So and the Russell great sign there. Look at how little volume there is on the Russell. You've got the hammer pattern. But uh, just an average 1.3 million on the Russell itself. So the VIX spiked up to about 30, 32. And then today, of course, it dropped big time uh, back down to 22. So wouldn't be surprised to see a rally out of this market and have it drop back off. In fact, interestingly enough, you know, we've got a little bit of a trend there, interestingly. Um, yeah, I don't do much with the VIX as far, especially with this type of stuff. I mean, it's not really, this isn't something like a stock that can be, you know, analyzed like a typical stock. Uh, is it possible, though, that we've got this little trend in place and it'll use that area? Well, it's going to be about the 1720 area anyway, which is a the higher end of the range for it for the most part. So we'll see what the VIX does. Like I say, I don't use this a whole lot. I look at it to see if there's anything significant clues to show up, but doesn't look like it. So, so that is it. A short market update this week. Come back to you in just a little bit with the big guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.